In this PetSafe wireless pet containment system review, I'm going to take you through my first-hand experiences with this wireless dog fence. Everything from unboxing the system to setting up your first fence in the collar, and even testing the system so that we can see how well it performs. And if you've ever seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I'm here to test these products from a dog's perspective. That means you'll get to see me wear the collar and get shocked. I can't say it's my favorite part of the job. Check out the video description for my latest recommendations and links to any deals that I may have. While I can't update this video, I can always keep that description up to date. I've been working with invisible dog fences for over four years now, and the PetSafe Wireless is consistently one of the most popular products with our audience. If you want your dog to enjoy the freedom of a smaller yard off-leash, and you want a system that's so easy to set up and can be portable, then the PetSafe Wireless dog fence is a reliable solution, especially for the price. Although if you have a yard larger than a half acre, you should check out the Spot On. It's a high-end product, but it's truly impressive. That said, I really can't advocate using the static correction, also known as a shock, to train your dog, because it freaking hurts. So I always recommend using the these types of products with the static correction turned off. But I know a lot of dog owners feel that the benefits outweigh the risks, especially if you live near a busy road or something like that. And if you're going to buy a product like this anyway, I can at least share what I've learned after using the PetSafe in many similar solutions. So let's dive in and see what comes in the box. Alright, so here we have the PetSafe wireless system, and we'll open it up. Down here. here we have some boundary flags. This here is the receiver, which is quite large. A user manual. But that's safe wireless fence collar, power block. And here we have the prongs for the collar, should you choose to use them. There are prongs installed. Potentially they're a bit longer, which is usually for longer haired dogs. And there's a little tool here, which usually is for, at the very least, tightening the prongs, should you choose to change them out. And it looks like there's an indicator light here as well, so that you can actually test the fence without shocking yourself and make sure that it's working. So not many components here. You have your collar, power block, the other set of prongs, the tool for adjusting the prongs and testing the static correction, training flags, and the receiver itself. So we'll go over setting up fences with the PetSafe Wireless in just a minute, but I want to bring attention to the fact that invisible dog fences are not a plug and play solution. With systems like the PetSafe Wireless, you can get the fence working in a matter of minutes, but it's absolutely essential that you take the time to train your dog so that they understand the logic. PetSafe recommends an 8-day training program, followed by supervised off-leash play for up to 30 days, depending on how long it takes for your dog to learn the boundaries you set. So let's keep it rolling here and see just how easy it is to get up and running with the PetSafe Wireless Pet Containment System. So setting up the PetSafe Wireless is actually pretty darn simple. All you have to do is plug in the power block here, which plugs into the side of the unit. And on the side, there's an on-off switch here. And you can see over here, there's an indicator. So now there's two switches on the front here. And basically the first one is the boundary switch, uh, which is setting from the low to the high setting. On both the high and the low setting, the minimum boundary size is five to 10 feet. And you control basically the setting of the boundary with this knob here. If you look on the side of this knob, you can see that there are, are numbers here. One is the lowest, of course, and 10 is the highest. On the low setting, the maximum size, if you turn this knob all the way to 10, is 40 to 45 feet. And if you switch it over to high, the maximum size is 85 to 90 feet, and I'm assuming that's radius. The PetSafe Wireless allows you to set up boundaries as small as 5 to 10 feet from the receiver to as much as 85 to 90 feet from the receiver in all directions. And actually setting up the fence is really easy too. PetSafe recommends two methods. The first requires two people. One person controls the transmitter with the boundary control dial set at a maximum setting of 8. The other person takes the collar and walks to where you'd like the boundary to be set. Make sure your hands aren't over the prongs or you'll get shocked like me. The person on the transmitter slowly dials the control down until the collar starts to beep and you're good to go. The second method requires only one person. Using the chart in the product manual, set the boundary switch and the dial to a setting that's right about where you want the boundary to be. Then hold the static tester to the collar prongs and walk towards the boundary until the collar beeps and the tester lights up. If the distance is too short or too far, return to the transmitter and tweak the settings, then test the boundaries again. Repeat the process until the boundary is set just as you'd like it. I took a bit of a shortcut for the purposes of my testing, so check out the manual for details on getting the optimal settings, but let's see it in action. So now PetSafe does give a couple of methods for setting the size of their fence in their manual. Um, basically how I would do it, considering the situation I'm in by myself, is turn the boundary control all the way up. So I'm moving it to 10 here. Eight, rather, I guess the maximum number is eight rather than 10, sorry. Basically now, take the collar and put it where you want the edge of the fence to be. Now again, this may not be exactly what they tell you to do in their manual, but this is what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna put it there and come back here to the receiver. And now what you can do is slowly reduce the boundary control and listen for that collar over there. There it is, it's beeping. So at a setting of about four is where I want the fence set. And if we come over here to the collar, we can hear that it's beeping. 
so we know that that's where the boundary is. And of course, you'll need to set the static correction on the collar as well. There are six settings, ranging from a setting of one, which is tone only, to a setting of six, which is high static correction. Let's take a look. All right, so now we'll set the static correction. So then there's a button here, and that's what you use to set the static correction. And we're gonna be looking at this indicator light here. So now we wanna press the button and release it when the indicator lights up. There it is. It just blinked once, indicating that the static correction is indeed turned off, as we suspected. And then to set the correction, you need to press the button within five seconds of waking the system up. There is a range here. One flash is no static correction, and six flashes is high static correction. I'm gonna put it on the medium setting, four flashes, so let's see here. All right, so now it's set to four. So yeah, you basically just press it however many times you want it to be set to. So now the static correction is set to four and we can try out with the indicator and see basically how this works. So just like that, you should be good to go. I'll show you how the fence performs in testing later in this video, but before we do that, I wanted to talk a bit more about how the PetSafe Wireless works and what it has to offer. So how the PetSafe Wireless works is that the boundary zone is a two to three foot wide area along the boundary that you set. Once the collar is outside the safe area and in that boundary zone, it'll give a couple of quick warning beeps, then proceed to issuing that static correction if it's turned on, while beeping at a faster rate. The correction will continue anywhere past the boundary zone, but it does have a safety shut off after 30 seconds if your pet doesn't return to the safe zone. Now, some of the best benefits of the PetSafe Wireless are, number one, it's ease of installation. As you've already seen, you can truly get up and running with the PetSafe Wireless in a matter of minutes. No need to bury wires like with in-ground fences, which can be very time consuming. And no need to even be connecting wires to a circuit board for that matter. And number two, along similar lines would be the portability. You can take this anywhere you get AC power. So even on a road trip in an RV through the gorgeous national parks or something like that, as long as you even have a converter, you're good to go. You can also use unlimited collars with the system. So if you have multiple dogs, you can just buy another collar for about $145 at the time I'm filming, and the system will work for them too. On the flip side, let's look at the drawbacks. I think the biggest one is the boundary shape. As with most wireless dog fences, GPS fences excluded, you're stuck with a circular boundary centered on the base station. And depending on where you mount the receiver and the shape of your yard, that can be limiting for sure. Wireless dog fences are also susceptible to interference, so if there are any large metal objects in the fence you set up, like a metal roof or debris from a SpaceX Starship launch, for example, that can cause the collar to lose signal and issue correction when it shouldn't. Conversely, if your neighbor has an in-ground dog fence and you're trying to put your wireless fence boundary right next to theirs, the in-ground dog fence can cause interference that will lead to the collar not sending alerts when it's in the wireless boundary zone. Next thing you know, they'll be on the prowl like the pups from Homeward Bound, so that's also something to keep in mind. And then there are the batteries this system uses, which are RFA67 batteries. They do help keep the system waterproof, and PetSafe says they last for one to two months, but they're definitely specific batteries that you're probably not going to use for anything else. And while there are a number of retailers you can find them from, they're not carried everywhere. And last, this may be a pro or a con, but the fence really only covers up to a half acre, so that's something else to keep in mind. Alright, so now for the good stuff. Let's see how the PetSafe Wireless actually performed during field testing. Okay, so I have the boundary set to setting 3 on low, so that should be about 15 to 20 feet from the transmitter we should hit the boundary of the fence. And let's just walk and see how the collar responds here. Alright, so there it's picking up the boundary and it seems like there's no real alert or anything like that. It just sort of starts signaling that you're at the boundary. Let me back up here and just see how it responds as I come back in the fence. We've backed up and we're safe and we'll try approaching the boundary one more time. So it seems to be fairly consistent with where the boundary starts. So let's back back up into safety here. Okay, we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the static correction and see how this works. Um, and we'll use the static correction tester to actually see that indicator light come on when the caller starts issuing static correction. All right, so now I have the static correction indicator touching the prongs here. And basically what should happen is we should see this area right in the center here light up when the static correction is issued. Basically, I'm gonna, gonna hold the tester on the prongs here and walk away from the transmitter. Now we're at the boundary. So now I'm backing up and we're safe in the boundary. I'm gonna do that again and zoom right up in on that indicator so we can hopefully see a little bit better walking forward towards the boundary. You can see that yes, right away, the static correction is being issued as soon as you cross that boundary line. So no warning for your dog, just the static correction. 
So the PetSafe Wireless seems to be capable of reliably alerting at the boundary. It does seem like there's potentially a little bit of variability in when the caller actually starts warning and correcting, but we're talking only maybe about one to three feet or so here. What I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that the warning period is quite brief, certainly too quick for me to respond and avoid getting hit with that static correction. I think it would be more fair to your dog if the warning at least went for a few seconds before issuing that correction, and turning off if they returned to the safe zone beforehand. Even better would be if there were alert tones and warning tones prior to the correction, like you see with the spot on GPS fence and some other products out there. But this is a pretty simple system designed for smaller yards and it's really quite affordable compared to some of the other options out there. So I guess that's a trade-off you're dealing with here. Now, no review of mine would be complete without giving it a try from a dog's perspective. So let's see what it's like for me to put on the collar and cross the boundary. Alrighty, here goes nothing. So I have to say, of all the things that I do in my job, the thing that I like doing least so far is getting shocked by these dog collars. And you know, if you are using them on your dog, I think that's something to keep in mind. It's definitely not a pleasant experience whatsoever. I certainly don't advocate using the static correction on your dog, but that's what these products do. And I am testing them from the dog's perspective, so that's what I'm here to do. That said, I do think I far prefer eating dog food to testing these types of collars. So without belaboring the point much more, I already know it hurts pretty bad. Uh, this is on the medium setting here, so let's see how it feels when I Cross the boundary with the PetSafe wireless dog pets. Oh, there it is. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty strong. That's definitely stronger than some of the others I've had. That's uh, just the medium setting. Should I try it one more time just to be fun? No, I think I might be good on that. Let's go ahead and say that the medium strength on that is plenty strong. Um, definitely gets the point across.